Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand forex technical analysis. If you're new, welcome, and if you're returning, welcome back. Um, haven't done these videos for the past couple of weeks. I um, hope you all have enjoyed your uh, your summer as well with the, you know the friends and the family and all that and um yeah we're back to business starting obviously september um everyone's uh, back from the uh, holidays so lots to go through also before we get into it don't forget to like subscribe and share uh, the content if you find it useful so we start off before we get into the technical analysis on some of the fundamentals and the sentiment analysis. So looking at the week ahead, um, trading economics say it will be a busy week with US in the US with jobs report, ISM, PMIs uh, and trade data right, and factory orders. Why is that important? Because of the, uh, the effect of potential uh, trade wars <clears throat> with China. Right, and we'll get into a little bit of that after this analysis. Um, elsewhere, central banks in Australia and Canada will be deciding on monetary policy. So uh, that's pretty much interest rates, whether they're going to be holding or cutting interest rates. Pretty much all major central banks are looking to cut interest rates due to the low inflation environment and global potential global slowdown. Also, investors will be focused on the UK and India market PMI. So UK, um, I think with the UK, it's more to do with Brexit. Any kind of economic uh, fundamental news isn't really going to have much effect. It's more about whether uh, the UK are going to be uh, are more likely to have a deal Brexit or a no deal Brexit, which is going to drive the sentiment of the pound. Uh, Eurozone retail trade and Germany factory orders. That's important because uh, apparently uh, Germany potentially are going into um, a recession and, um, you know, retail sales and Germany being Europe's biggest um uh, uh, I guess, uh, country um, economically in the Eurozone. The focus really is on Germany and what they do. Um, and if they start to slow down, pretty much everyone else is slowing down. So uh, Eurozone retail trade, Germany factory orders and industrial output, and then China uh, PMIs, Australia second quarter GDP growth, that'd be important as well. Trade balance and retail sales. And... Um, also Japan household spending so there is potentially you know a lot of uh, um, in, uh, say data being released and what's really um, you know potentially market moving but also what is may overshadow pretty much everything is the US and China begin imposing new tariffs as tr the trade war escalates. So Chinese exports worth 125 billion will face new taxes from the 1st of September. Pretty much today I'm recording this on the 1st of September. Uh, while China places a levy on oil and agree and um, as agreements become more distant. So again, the, the more, um, the closer and the more that the trade war between China and America is likely to be resolved, the more positive I think everybody will be. And uh, but according to this article by Martin Farah, um, this uh, um, you know pretty much spells out that there are you know tariffs being implemented and um, that the, uh, the, the the deal between China and America are maybe not as close as people may think, even though um, it's an independent Australian market strategist, Mark McKen so Greg McKenna, Mark McKenna has said um, concerns have been repeatedly soothed by coalitionary words from Beijing and Washington, right? And he said in reality, um, could begin, he said, basically it could begin to buy with Sunday's new uh, round of tariffs. So come um, Sunday evening, open UK time, uh, Monday morning, we could see risk off, which basically would mean that the uh, Japanese yen and the Swiss franc, as well as, you know, safe havens like gold um, may strengthen. But uh, this is not a prediction. It's just basically wait to see what the market sentiment is when it opens. Now, getting into the technicals so 
Let's start off on the Dow Jones Dollar Index as we always do. And again, this hasn't been updated. Um, none of these charts have been updated for the last uh, couple weeks as I haven't um, taken a bit of time off uh, from doing this. So uh, let's load new bars and see what's happened. So supply zone pretty much is held out and uh, Dow Jones Dollar Index is really just a measure of uh, dollar strength against uh, the other major currencies like the Euro, the Pound and the Yen as well as the Australian Dollar. and. There have been some opportunities to obviously short and go long on the um, uh, the, the dollar, and uh, over the recent you know recent week um, we've had you know some dollar strength. So let's go to the price chart and see what we can do to update um, any of the zones, which I've kind of done already previously. So here we've got, and here really was the previous demand zone there. Right, so what we do is we look at the Dow Jones in, an index for really just confluence, any kind of dollar strength that comes into a demand zone. Um, you want to be buying any kind of dollar crosses and vice versa. So if there's any sell trades or, or we get some, you know, uh, some shorting opportunities, um, what you want to see is uh, the Dow Jones dollar index confirm that and dollar weakness, if you know what I mean. So now that we've made new high, uh, higher lows, higher highs, we've uh, <clears throat> created a new demand zone right here. So what you want to probably see if you're looking to short the dollar is look for uh, the dollar index to start to sell off before we go in into the onto the dollar yen, dollar Swiss, dollar CAD, etc. And looking for short trades price. If if you're looking to buy the dollar, you're looking at you know um, any kind of bullish price action, especially within an, an area of demand for confluence so next on list is the dollar yen and the dollar yen again this is about two weeks ago so the last update was the 9th of august let's see what's happened during that time and we've literally had prices kind of just go ranging between this demand zone and this supply zone it did have a bit of a spike down um last week in the beginning of last week i think this is more of a stop hunt and then prices have gone on their way so um if we're looking at the um dollar yen uh to up, really update the chart um we could leave things as they are i guess but i think i will just make some adjustments so we've made a bit of a higher high there in fact this whole area i would say is demand right there um what i am going to do though is i'm going to move this to around here just to to clarify things you've also got a level of what no what is known as support resistance resistance so if you are looking to get short best bet is to probably look for this 107 round number or thereabouts before looking to get short um what you want to probably try to avoid is levels that have been touched several times you know fresher areas of supply are you know um are better so you know this 107 round number fresher area of supply is uh is probably favorable if you're looking to trade some risk off sentiment potentially coming into the market um so as the market opens pretty much look for pretty shorts now but preferably up up high if you're looking for long trades i like this area below the um around this 105 uh round number and below so anywhere around here will be a decent area to look for some long trades and uh we use support and resistance in conjunction with supply and demand um, really just because of the supply and demand equation. If you want to know more about that and why, um, then there's a video that should pop up in the top right hand corner. Um, it talks about the supply and demand equation. So these are areas where we want to look for potential um, buying opportunities when you have a wide zone of demand like this, right? So um, next on the list is the dollar Swiss. <clears throat> dollar Swiss and uh, managed to get into this trade matter of fact I'm still in this trade um, and let's see what the new bars so what we've got uh, from a couple of weeks ago is um, nice bullish engulfing candle and prices have reacted from this uh, this, this uh, 
long term demand zone so if you zoom out a little bit yeah so that was from the uh, June the 25th nice textbook trade right there prices are where they are now um, again with risk off coming into the market and the supply zone here this could be potentially a, uh, a take profit area so um, if you are in this trade um, you may want to look to potentially take profit and it's at this 99 round number as well um, uh, but again we don't know uh, oh. all right so um, uh, it's just basically a take profit potential take profit area if you've got a decent risk reward and again like I said just uh, uh, risk off potentially coming into the market so if you're looking to um, potentially get short on risk off and short the dollar now is pretty much a decent time to has a nice uh, supply technically anyway it's a nice supply zone um, to update this uh, demand zone we've got quite wide demand zones right here so um, let's just maybe move that down a little bit more I want to say that area there is an area of interest um, but what we also have is higher highs and higher lows here so we've got a large zone so again when we get those massive zones all right what we want to do is separate them and look for areas within that where other traders would be looking to potentially get long um, or short within those zones so we've got a level of resistance there support there resistance there and then we've got actually we've got a bit of an outside candle right there um, so that's hidden demand so this is where we're going to be placing the uh, the demand zone so pretty much if prices do come back to this area this would be the first area I'd be looking for to look for long trades if not then you know down at this 97 round number is a nice area for uh, confluence or what you could also do is go down into your lower time frame and look for lower time frame um, support and resistance zones so that looks like one as well right there yeah um, but from a daily perspective those are you know your 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 areas to look for um, by trades now moving on to the dollar cad dollar cad um, last couple of weeks I think we've literally yeah, been in this range between that supply zone zoom out a little bit it's a nice supply zone there and uh, this demand zone again there was a nice opportunity for long trades there um, which we managed to take um, but really haven't gotten into any trades on this one again we're looking for our price to come back down to this demand zone or back down to these demand zones before looking at long trades if you're looking for a short trade uh, then I think right now um, is a decent time I personally be looking for again if I was looking to get short um, a fresher area of supply before looking at any kind of short trades long trades would be within this zone here we've touched it once so twice is is pretty much okay um, the CAD um, depending on what happens fundamentally whether they're going to be uh, potentially cutting rates or um, holding rates you know may drive um, the uh, price of the Canadian dollar um, a bit stronger especially if they tend to hold rates they did get some good GDP news um, or some decent GDP news on Friday so the CAD's looking um, quite decent matter of fact when it comes to um, economic uh, policy anyway when it comes to whether they're going to be raising uh, cutting or holding rates moving on to New Zealand dollar US dollar and uh, New Zealand dollar is literally just continued lower and this is mainly due to um, there being a surprise cut so um, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand <clears throat> ended up cutting more than expected so kind of surprised the market um, and so what the market is really doing at the moment is I would say is probably just pricing in that extra cut uh, let's see if it reached there yep so it's top of that demand zone there um, but also as well 
um, the US dollar is pretty much the strongest out of you know the two anyway so you've got a whole load of uh, supply and prices really being um, you know driven lower uh, due to strength of you know overall strength of the US dollar anyway um, regardless of what um, uh, the news is, is telling you about you know um, uh, uh, dollar recession and US economic recession you also have to compare that to everyone else and um, the US is still the number one currency <clears throat> overall doesn't mean there can't be pullbacks you know within that time or whatever it is but um, overall you still want to get um, you know probably me personally is uh, I'm still long dollar um, over you know any any other currency and any pullbacks just looking for this that's for me just shorting opportunities so um, with the US sorry New Zealand dollar cutting more than expected <clears throat> what you're looking for is any kind of pullbacks into these areas here we have had a massive say massive but it's quite a long um, downtrend without any kind of pullback so you you know you have to expect a pullback at some point and any pullbacks into these zones will be um, areas that I'd be looking to get um, short in All right so best area for me is going to be that area of confluence where you've got support support should turn to what resistance here so the supply and demand equation there should be some decent supply within this zone, this area here, probably as well in the immediate short term, it's going to be some probably within that zone there as well. Um, so again, decent buying opportunity if you think that the dollar is going to, you know, get weak. Um, uh, and talking about the the, the, the U.S. dollar, um, but overall, I think this is still a sell trade. Moving on to the pound dollar, the pound dollar. What we've done so we've kind of bounced off of this um, demand zone a couple of weeks ago did get some price action here but prices have literally gone through that supply I think it's taken out pretty much all of the stops a bit of a stop hunt here um, and now beginning to sell off and this is uh, again due to some brexit sentiment so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that actually in fact I'm going to move it up here now um, for those of you taking the course, this isn't necessarily your uh, um, your textbook um, supply as far as a strong level of supply. If you go through, you know, the analysis, but um, I will keep this uh, supply zone here because to deny that that there is supply here is, um, you know, is isn't necessarily uh, true. There is supply. It's not necessarily the strongest area of supply. And what we want to really see is, uh, you know, basically a bit, you know, more supply before understanding that this is definitely a strong area of um, of supply so uh, that's what we're looking at I mean there is an opportunity also to get involved on any kind of pullbacks but just again understand that from a daily supply perspective this isn't necessarily the strongest area of supply due to certain reasons there is demand here so you've got a demand zone right there uh, change that to demand and also what I'm going to do is I am going to just get rid of uh, this demand zone for now and draw a bit of an overlapping one let's see if that is yeah so there's a bit of demand there as well um, and then we have also some support and resistance within that area. So if you're looking at buying the first area, you know, buying the dollar, sorry, buying the pound is, is now. And then you've also got, I think another little area right here to look to buy. And then this absolute low area right here. And again, that's if you believe the British pound sentiment is going to get better, i.e. The, um, the UK is going to do a deal with Europe if you think so if you don't then this is really just a sell trade at the uh, supply or pretty much further up if you get um you know some uh, positive sentiment that would be a nice short trade um around this uh, 1.245 area um moving on to the euro dollar 
and the euro dollar um, a couple of weeks ago there was a nice shorting opportunity right here in this supply zone um, and then we had prices sell off and uh, for those of you that have been watching for any length of time you know that um, you know my opinion on the euro um, it's just literally shorting the euro it has a nice opportunity um, and uh, you can see pretty much what's happening um, with the euro and the dollar the euro is not in much worse shape than the US at the moment so there's really no reason at the moment to buy the um, the, the euro We've also got potential quantitative easing um, coming in September, the next uh, week and a half, two weeks, and that should have um, the effect of QE is to weaken the currency. So with that being said, um, it's the intention of the European Central Bank to weaken its currency. Right? People get it, get you know, it confused that um, central banks don't want a weak currency, they do, and that's because they want to stimulate inflation. And if you read any of Donald Trump's tweets, especially one recently where he's, he's complaining and moaning about um, uh, the European, uh, Europe and China having an unfair advantage because their currency is weak, right? Because of, like I said, certain economic factors and what a weak currency, the benefits that a weak currency has. So don't ever think that, you know, it's a mis misconception that um, central banks always want a strong currency. They don't. In fact, all central banks at the moment are cutting interest rates pretty much. Um, because they want weaker currencies yeah so the European Central Bank are actually getting what they want which is a weaker euro and it's pretty much broken this area here so if we go to uh, and this chart really update it we got a nice supply zone right there um, let's delete this level here uh, and again any kind of pullbacks I think into this area here is definitely a nice shorting opportunity zooming out we haven't got any kind of weekly demand until this 108 level so <clears throat> for now it's pretty much shorts all the way and let's just maybe clear some of this up and let's put that there and again, if you want to know, um, you know more about the uh, fundamentals, there is a fundamental analysis course, um, and the link is in the description box below. And it basically goes over, you know, interest rates, inflation, and GDP, and why central banks would want a weaker currency to in, to achieve their really their inflation target, which is two percent. Anyways, uh, going on to the euro yen and the euro yen. Um, risk being off um, pretty much the euro has weakened as well right? and uh, we've come down into this demand zone it's reacted and you know we're back down into this zone um, we've created you know some supply zones also uh, staggered quite a large zone if you think about it where we've got all this level of supply um, and again when you have a large area of supply what you want to do is kind of see where there potentially may be some support and resistance within that area all right so you've got support bit of support here bit of support and then it kind of breaks down and it's you know I'd say that area there's resistance so if you do get a pullback into this area specifically that's a nice um, decent short long trades if you believe that the euro is going to get strong for you know whatever reason potentially just profit taking and pullbacks now is pretty much a decent time to look for some long trades um, but risk off remember the yen is a safe haven currency so uh, potentially the yen could look to strengthen uh, looking at the Aussie dollar and Aussie dollar since we've really just gone sideways um, uh, within this uh, demand zone nothing's really happened pretty much untradeable um, actually nothing's untradeable but from a daily perspective um, nothing's really gone on uh, so if we go back to the charts not to update the chart I would probably say um, I'm gonna pull this level down a little bit 
there is some demand here but not necessarily a strong area of demand and there is also some supply um, again not textbook but just to show you that there is demand down here and there is supply here I wouldn't say this is necessarily the strongest area of supply or demand um, but if I was looking at either now it's pretty much time to get long preferably if it goes if prices can go get down to that um, 67 or 60 0 0.668 level and again that's where your area of you know shorting is um, when it comes to uh, this currency pair this week uh, nothing really no really setups um, potentially on a daily supply or demand um, would you really want to be buying the Australian dollar versus the uh, the US dollar um, again that's really up to um, uh, you from a technical perspective but it's not the greatest area of supply it has touched a couple of times but it's decent nevertheless uh, but moving on to the final currency of this week and it is the Aussie Yen Aussie Yen I don't think has uh, um, uh, uh, moved as much as uh, I had, had expected expected it to uh, due to risk off but we have had you know this sideways movement then we got bit of a push down move up so um, again any shorts you know over the past uh, coming weeks I would say coming weeks but the past previous weeks um, were definitely opportunities and you can see where they've actually uh, where it's worked out um, due to risk off let's go to update the chart I'm gonna again probably get rid of this longer term demand zone and again I'm probably gonna put some demand right here it's not necessarily the uh, textbook demand but to deny that that is demand um, isn't correct we've got a level of support there so I think if you're looking to get long then you're looking for either pull back into this area here or that fresher area of demand where demand is at its strongest from a supply zone perspective you're probably looking at a higher area to look for um, a trade at the top of the range because if you look where the range is and let's go from here to here you know where we are is just about fair value this would be a either a bargain or a cheap area and this is a bargain or a cheap area depending on which one you know you want to buy or sell so if you're shorting then this you're assuming that this is a bargain for the Japanese yen right which is the reason why you're going to be buying the yen um, and if this is you know if you're looking to buy here you're saying that the Australian dollar is an absolute bargain at this price so um, again nice little range but not necessarily the best when it comes to you know the level selection um, and how many times it's been you know touched but um, those are pretty much your options for now shorting here or getting long anywhere around here so um, guys take care um, and I uh, hope you have had um, you know enjoyed the uh, the technical analysis and for those that have uh, purchased the course don't forget that you have um, if you go to number 11 which is in the uh, course area right right here supply and demand weekly analysis right um, 11 and I've got the members market analysis for over 25 pairs which goes over everything that we learn in the course um, for over 25 forex pairs so if you want to know a bit more you can check that out so guys um, have a great week and I will speak to you soon take care